Hello and welcome back to chapter 12, video two. Don't forget the, the notes and submit them when we're done. All right, so uh, we left off with the troubleshooting tools on the syslog server. The syslog server can always be extremely helpful, of course, because it has all, it's gonna, uh, it aggregates all the events that occurs on the network, right? So please take, the at least this little snapshot right here to know all the different levels of the uh, the syslog server and this is how you would set up the syslog server you know if, if there is a server a computer that has this ip address so you type in login host this is the ip address of the server and you say login trap notification zero to five will be notification will be there right and logging will be sent and logging logging on so when you tap these commands on your router your router will start sending from zero to five uh, uh <coughs> traps will be sent to the server 2091652000 so please write that down all right let's take a look at some of the causes take a snapshot of this this is a table of the symptoms of, on the physical layer so if you have performance are lower than the uh, the baseline you know very very slow something is you know very slow access low loss of uh, connectivity cable my whatever it could be the interface or the cable the network bo uh, bottlenecking or congestions uh high cpu utilization rates uh, console error messages so all of that is something that you may suspect at the physical layer uh so bottlenecking meaning if the route fails if you had a you know um a static route and it fails and they're trying to get some they are being rerouted somewhere else that might um create a bottlenecking um also at the physical layer you know take a snapshot of this if you have power related hardware faults cable faults uh the system attenuation you know the signal is dying out very quickly there's too much noise uh, electromagnetic interference uh you got a lot of interface errors um it could be it could be any of these right at the data link layer you have the, for example no, again take a snapshot of this you may have uh no connectivity at layer at the network layer uh, or above because the framing may be different on both sides uh network operating below baseline performance, excessive broadcasts, right? It could be a looping where, you know, STP has been disabled. You may probably want to check that out. Uh, and uh, take a look at the console messages. Routers, you know, they send messages every time they detect a problem, like when you shut down an interface, right? We'll get that message at the console immediately. All right, so you double check those out. Uh, and here's what the probable cause. You may have encapsulation errors, address mapping errors, framing errors, or STP failure. So you'll look for those four problem causes and uh, try to mitigate or fix them, right? So take a snapshot of this. <coughs> Excuse me, at the network layer. So there are two types of symptoms that you may have. Network failure, no connections, or suboptimal performance. Um, so it all depends. Again, take a snapshot of this, but here what the problems that can cause any of these. General network issues, connectivity, routing table, neighboring issues, topology. So we've talked about these during the semester. For example, OSPF need to have the... Um, the hello and the dead interval to be the same, to be a neighbor. Uh, you may not be advertising the correct network for them to be, to be. That's why you're not in the route. The default gateway could not be, can be configured incorrectly. It all depends, right? So you got to check those out. Um, at the transport layer, again, take a snapshot of this. You select the traffic flow mostly it's acls when it comes to the transport layer so some if, if this is how i would start doing it 
The very first thing when I'm troubleshooting is I ping the destination device. If it doesn't ping, then I start worrying about the bottom three layers. If it pings, then I start looking at the access list probably at layer four and I move upward, right? So divide and conquer is my way of going about it. Unless I know one of the first thing I do is I look to see, you know, if, if everything is where they're supposed to be connected. Uh, if we're doing it in lab, the first thing I got to do is I got to make sure all the devices are connected where they're supposed to be. You'll be surprised where cables end up connecting to when they're not, not supposed to. I've seen many things such as uh, no power, of course. That's big. That's a big one. Uh, cables that are placed in the wrong interface. So you're you're configuring one interface, but the cable is somewhere else, uh, and so on. So those are the big ones that I usually have uh, usually see. And so you got to make sure that the power is on and the and the topology is connected the way it's supposed to be connected, and then. Um, I'll just go and ping and, you know, double check, make sure uh, if the pinging doesn't work according to the list that I have, then I'll try to troubleshoot the bottom three layers. And I start with the top, make sure that the IP addresses are configured correctly where they're supposed to be. And then I move downward. And typically, of course, you know, you'll find where the problem is. And uh, from experience, you'll, you know, sometimes you go in and you'll know exactly what the problem is because you've seen it before, but you have to document. Anyway, so this is a table for troubleshooting the transport layer. Here are what the symptoms are, and it could be um, what the, what the I know, you know, what the description is. So you could have a DHCP problem. You could have a DNS, an SNMP problem tunneling problem for encryption purposes, you know, um, if you are doing a side-to-side -side VPN, make sure both sides are agreeing on the tunneling and the, pro and the encryption protocols, the integrity protocols, all of those wonderful things that we've talked about previously. Make sure your DHCP is set correctly. The, D uh, the default gateways are configured uh, correctly. Uh, the pool, the reservations that you put, the excluded address, all of that have to be in there, right? NAT could be, okay, double check the NAT and make sure that the, the ones that are trying to access the internet uh, are from the, they're in the access list, remember? So, the, you know, or for make sure that you're having, the pool is correct, for example. Uh, the inside net and the outside net is also uh, configured correctly, right? At the application layer, take snap a shot of this. These are the different protocols or applications that you can test out. Make sure that none of these ports have been blocked, for example, right? At the firewall level. Um, troubleshooting connectivity. Uh, when it comes to troubleshooting connectivity, um, here's what I want you to write. I think I took the notes down. Yeah. So write these down. Bottom up approach is when there is no end to end connectivity and you follow the following. Check the physical connectivity from make sure the cables where they're supposed to be. You have power on, uh, check for duplex mismatches. You know, sometimes people divide some, um, uh, Switches, especially if you bought them used, may have a configuration already in there on a port that says duplex full, which means it's not going to negotiate the duplex mode with anyone else. You have to be full duplex to be connected, and that's probably one issue why you won't be able to get in. And it will say duplex mode, uh, duplex space full, and it will say speed space, let's say a thousand. That means the device that needs to connect to it has to be full duplex and a, a gigabit full duplex. Otherwise, it won't connect. So you can do that by typing show run and look at the interface. Make sure that the duplex and the speed is on auto, right? Uh, check the data link network layer addressing. Verify that the default gateways are correct. 
ensure that devices are determining the correct path. All right, and uh, verify the transport layer is functioning correctly. Double check the ACLs, for example. Uh, verify that there is no ACLs blocking the traffic. Ensure that the DNS settings are correct as well. All right, so you can always use the ping command and the trace command. We've used these a lot. I highlighted these. The show interfaces G00 interface that's going to verify the physical layer. So in troubleshooting uh, the performance related issues uh, on the on the switch, you type show interface, for example, FA018. That's good to check for the duplex mode. Or you can do the show run to check on all the interfaces. Um, what else here? Should be on W. Uh, ARP to check the ARP cache on the network. Show MAC address table when you are try, try, trying to find out if the interfaces are connected to the same VLAN that you want it to. Or, or just type show VLAN. That would do that too. But here you'll know the MAC addresses, which port they are in, and which VLAN is in. Gives you more information with the show MAC address table. Show IP route, of course, displays the routing table and the default gateway. Uh, route print or on, on the PC end, you can type route print or netstat r to verify the default gateway. IP config always helps out too, right? Show IPv6 interface G0 slash zero. Um, you can tell net through port 80. This is a good way of testing to see if port 80 has been blocked or not. If you know port 80 is open, so try to tell that through port 80, right? Um, you can use, and if it, if it's, if you, if you, if it goes through, that means port 80 is not blocked. So this is one way to know to see if port 80 has been blocked or not. You can test it out. So let's say you wanted to block it. And you did that through ACLs. And how do you test it if you don't have a web browser? You can see if you can tell it to go through it. Um, show IP interface serial.011. If you want to look at to see if the access list has been applied on that interface or not. NS lookup. And IP host. Let me just highlight this one also. I'm going to bold this side one as well. Okay, so NS lookup and IP host, the name and the IP address to make if you want to place a record in the DNS. This is how you actually, you can say IP host, this is the name, this is the IP address. So if you want to ping 172.16.1.100, all you got to do is type IPv4 dash server. All right, so please write all of this down. These are uh, the, if you're checking for connectivity, okay, so, um, Pinging is not working out for you, for example. Okay? Okay. Again, write all of this down. And uh, hopefully, remember, this chapter is extremely important in terms of a reference for troubleshooting your network. So uh, keep that in mind. And all the notes that I gave you from the previous uh, video and this, one, and this video, uh, keep in hand whenever you are building your networks from now on. This is a good way to start. Anyway, uh, take the notes that I asked you to do and submit them, and I'll see you on the next chapter.